consider, well, maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, or that person that is so arrogant, well, it's a probably a good chance that the self-accusing spirit of that person is so faint or so has been so completely silenced that they don't hear it anymore. Mm -hmm. And the scripture goes on to say that all in Adam died. Mm -hmm. Look at that word in Adam. Mm -hmm. What does it mean all in Adam died? Well, if the if the man of that time, he's not the first human being on the earth. Mm -hmm. The one to Adam in the Bible. But if he died spiritually, that's how he died. Mm -hmm. Then he began to produce two types of human beings. Mm -hmm. A Cain and an Abel. Cain and Abel represents two types of human beings that began to populate the earth. And the Cains were far more predominant than the Abels. Mm -hmm. So if all in him died, that means from his loins and from his mind and heart, the line of human beings that will come are going to be after his mind and heart line. Mm -hmm. So if he did, he's going to produce death. So we're living in a world of death that has to be risen. Resurrected mm -hmm. or start that process of resurrection, right. as the minister mentioned in the self improvement study guide. Yes, sir. We live in a world that is essentially institutionalized, mm -hmm. a cane mentality. Mm -hmm. You listen to how we talk. You know, I got to get the bag, I got to get mine. You know, it's a dog eat dog world. All these sayings you have mm -hmm. business in this world, business is warfare. Mm -hmm. Well, why I got to be warfare? Because we live in a world of usury. You know, the thing that God and the resources that God intended for all human beings based on the right. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan pointed out to us. And if you study this, you'll find him absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Any human need is a human right. So human beings have a right to food. They have a right to clothing. They have a right to shelter. Mm -hmm. But in a society that's based on capitalism, where people have to pay exorbitant you know, prices for what should be rightfully theirs, mm -hmm. you know, and there are societies in America, I mean, in the world where, for instance, there are uh, some countries, even uh, European countries where health care is a human right for them. But the cost of health care in America, oh, my goodness, man, mm -hmm. you have to pay a death tax to be buried. I mean, you came from the earth, so now I got to. Not only do I have to pay to get here, I got to pay ten thousand. I got to pay. Back in I got to pay <laughs> several thousand to get here to be born. Mom and dad leave the hospital. They ain't got good insurance, brother. That hospital bill gonna kill them. And then when I die, you got to open a go GoFundMe just to be put back in the ground. So the undertaker, you know, and the funeral parlors and the people that do that, the undertakers and the mortuaries, you know, and the morticians, they get filthy rich off of it. So, I mean, that's the kind of world we live in, bro. And the self-accusing spirit don't exist at the funeral homes and at the <laughs> insurance companies. Brother, <laughs> brother. <laughs> brother. I mean, you have to tell your loved ones because the, the reality, mm -hmm. the truth is, mm -hmm. some of these funeral homes and funeral services capitalize upon the grief of the person that's lost a loved one. And you come in and some of them read you. Oh, they... Here's a real beautiful casket. They don't tell you it costs twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars, <laughs> you know. So you have to have somebody there with you. You know, many in our community have learned: be careful when you go with your insurance policy. Sometimes we don't even tell them we got a policy. Mm -hmm. we, what's the price first? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Then I'll tell you what my policy is. So you know. Yes, sir, brothers and sisters, if you're just now tuning in to the self improvement basis for. Community Development Talk Show. I'm your weekly host, Brother James Muhammad. I'm honored to have back on the show this afternoon the Holly Springs representative of the Nation of Islam, student minister, Abdul Shaheed Muhammad. And I dragged him back on the show to discuss <laughs> yes, sir. the self-improvement study guide, yes. the revealed word of God, divine revelation to humanity. These study guides are so important. I remember watching the movie Belly mm -hmm. and Nas was reading a book and when he closed that book, it was the self-improvement basis for a community development study guide. Mm -hmm. I remember my uh, former secretary telling me about one of the sisters, one of the sisters from Envo, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. would come by the mosque and pick up her study guides. Mm-hmm. This is divine revelation. Mm-hmm. If you want to improve your life, you want to take a look at the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror, pick up these study guides here. Mm-hmm. Yes, now, sir. back to the study guides. Study guide number one, mixed feelings and controversy. Mm-hmm. These study guides, if they're designed on the guidance of Allah, then they're like prescriptions to humanity. Mm-hmm. Mixed feelings and controversy. How do we handle it? How do we handle it? <laughs> that sound like those two wolves? That sound like that self-accusing spirit talking to each other? Mm-hmm. Why do you think mixed feelings and controversy is the first study guide? Because... Uh, You know, what I have gleaned from it, one of the things that stand out in my mind, brother, is wherever a servant of God appeared, mixed feelings and controversy followed him. Mm -hmm. So naturally, those who would try to follow the teachings and the example of the prophets of God in their sphere of influence, there's going to be mixed feelings about you and controversy. Because... I would say every member of the nation of Islam, when they decided to make, or when they made the decision to accept the teachings Uh and change their way of living, it was mixed feelings and controversy coming from your family, from your friends, people telling you you've been brainwashed and folks done made you crazy down there. Mm -hmm. So So now the question is, the person that has accepted to engage in the process of self-examination, self-analysis, and self-correction, how are you going to handle it? Mm-hmm. Are you going to cower, you know, and because people look at you funny now, you know, as brothers in the nation, you, we, we are on the corner selling the final call, and your boys that knew you when you was in high school, mm-hmm. grow, they drive by and say, they look at you, mm-hmm. man, they got Dre on the corner selling that paper, you know. Now something's wrong with us, but when I was going on Bill Street getting drunk and doing the things with my frat brothers, Mm -hmm. you know, acting wild, nobody asked me what was wrong with me then. But when I decided to stop that kind of lifestyle or living that way and clean up my life, now all of a sudden what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. I don't drink no more. I don't do any things I used to do, Mm -hmm. you know, that were self-destructive, you know, and injurious to my health. Now all of a sudden I've stopped doing those things Now the question is, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. So that's the mixed feelings and controversy. And I want to say this too, Brother James. Mm -hmm. The minister said, when you you mentioned one of the sisters from En Vogue, you said, remember, would come by the mosque and pick up her study guides. Now remember, the minister said, this is the launching pad. I want to find his exact words. Of a worldwide movement. Of a worldwide worldwide movement. movement. That's right there. So (laughs) these study guides... He said, this speech, in my judgment, formally ushers in that which is the launching pad of a worldwide movement. So this is not just for believers or members of the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. This is for any human being who wants to take a look in what I would say is a very good, clean mirror Mm -hmm. to self-examine, to self-analyze and self-correct because the most lasting form of correction is Mm self-correction because you know it's like children children will do right as long as the parent is present but when mama or daddy or the teacher lead a class where the children maintain their discipline and Mm self-correct most of the time no well we like that too Mm -hmm. so but when you self-correct it's the most lasting and sustaining form of correction you you know you mentioned uh when you decide to make that change in your life because I went from the club scene, suited and booted in the clubs, to being suited and booted standing on the, <laughs> on the corner <laughs> in the front of the call newspaper. Yes, sir. And people would ride past, and they're like, is that jazz? That mm-hmm. was my nickname. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't believe that I actually just stopped everything cold mm-hmm. turkey. No oh. drinking. Yep. Same no here. pork. Same here. Then I was just so anxious. Mm-hmm. To go to the mosque and pick up my study guide on a Friday night. And I remember, mm-hmm. you know, I felt that mixed feelings and controversy within. Mm-hmm. Is this the right direction? Mm-hmm. What is my family going to say? Mm-hmm. I'm a preacher's son. Mm-hmm. So I would actually, <laughs> don't laugh at me now. I would leave Friday night study group. And then I would actually go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Then I, I would come out it. of the club and the brothers be outside of the club sending the final call newspaper. Mm. And I was in the process. And the brothers would never say anything to me. And then one day, I, my brother, brother Rob, I love him to death. He said, brother, it's not a sin to go to the club, but it will entice you to sin. Mm. Ooh, the environment. Uh, the environment. Mm -hmm. So I stopped. And the next mixed feelings and controversy came from the family. Mm -hmm. Everybody sentenced me to hell. Mm -hmm. Me too, brother. Mm -hmm. So we have to wrestle with that on the inside and be patient long enough mm -hmm. for our family to see that change and also that we haven't left Jesus, but we're really walking with the right Jesus now. Mm -hmm. We're being properly introduced to Jesus, mm -hmm. not in the form of an actual person, mm -hmm. because uh, we, what we really are, and who mm -hmm. we really are, is the sum total, total of what we think, mm -hmm. okay? So Jesus, in the sense that I'm talking, is those eternal principles and truths that Jesus built his life on. Mm -hmm. Because remember, in scripture, and I think this is a mistake that we make, people of faith. Mm -hmm. We worship Jesus, but Jesus never said worship him. Mm -hmm. He said, follow me. He said, these are people who claim me with their lips, but their hearts are far removed mm -hmm. from thee. If any man would be my disciple, he must first deny himself, pick up his cross. What do you mean pick up your cross? Not go to the store and buy a crucifix, gold, silver, whatever, but pick up the cross of life, the struggle to live up right. The cross represents, as we're taught, the vertical nature or the uprightness that all of us have, the desire to be right. So there's an upright, but there's a horizontal, you know, a low desire part. And to pick up your cross means to challenge the force within, the, the tendency to live on a horizontal level, which represents death, and suppress that. So on a cross, if you suppress the animalistic nature of self and allow the uprightness to be the predominant mm -hmm. part of self, you are what the Masons call upright on the square then. Mm -hmm. So you're living an upright life. So when Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me, a lot of people are praising and worshiping Jesus, but very few of us are actually following him, man. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, us as religious people, as a community, we're powerless to change the realities that we see happening in our community. Our children are running us in the house now, you know, and we're still praying. We go into our worship services every Sunday. But when are we going to uh, uh, apply, if you will, in an effective way, the principles that we read about and shout about and quote you know, and pour over every Sunday and several days throughout the week. You know, the power of God is almost confined to the sanctuary of our mosques and churches. So that's why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, you see us out in the community. Mm -hmm. You see us on the corner with the final call. You know, we want to go in the parts of our community where our brothers and sisters you know, I engaged in some of the worst behavior. In fact, last time we were here, we mentioned God willing uh, coming up around the end of uh, October, October. We will be going into a community down in Tupelo, Mississippi, where some of our brothers in the street tribes, as they called or street organizations, have been at odds with one another. And they they wanted to stop. Mm -hmm. So they reached out to us, you know. And then once again to Brother Teddy, we acknowledge mm -hmm. Brother Teddy of Growth and Development and Brother Mark of the Conservatives Vice Lords, Brother Main C and those brothers, mm -hmm. you know, but those brothers in Tupelo who are, who've been having problems with one another, they want to see an end to it, man. Mm -hmm. It's not what they want, but they, they, they are desirous of guidance. So as the scripture teach, go ye into the highways and byways and compel men unto Christ. So I mean, it's easy to talk about. But who, who among us is willing to go in the hood? Okay. Brothers and sisters, if you'd like to know more about the self-improvement basis for a community development study guide, you can go online at study.noi.org. 
O-R-G to get your study guide. Also mm -hmm. get your weekly study because this week we're on study guide number nine. nine. Our intimate relationship with Rabbi. With Rabbi Rabbi That's my Ayala favorite Ayala study guide. Rabbi al means Lord of the Worlds. Now, in that particular study guide, as it relates to the self-improvement study guide, the minister quote in study guide number nine, whenever man loses the ability to read Allah God will in yeah. that which is around him or her, then it is incumbent upon Almighty God Allah mm -hmm. to raise from among us mm -hmm. a messenger or an apostle. Now, when that man come, he brings a word, mm -hmm. divine <laughs> revelations. Mm -hmm. Now, is divine revelation catered to the condition or design for the condition of the people, like the self improvement study guide? Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, uh, some of the titles of the study guide, mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It's like a doctor giving a prescription. Mm -hmm. The prescription is tailored and formulated to address the illness. Mm -hmm. Well, what illness does uh, black people suffering from? Mm -hmm. We have an inferiority complex. We mm -hmm. have self-hatred. We have a lot of maladies. So to other religious communities that don't understand the prescription that God gave us, because we've been trying a lot of prescriptions, haven't mm -hmm. we? Have they been working? No. <laughs> okay. Well, you call, some people call what we're taught a concoction. Well, a, a physician, <laughs> he puts together what is initially called a concoction. Mm -hmm. And when he applies it or deploys it to the patient and the patient gets better, you can con no longer call that a concoction. Mm -hmm. You can call it a prescription. So God prescribes the study guides uh, like a prescription and and those who have watched the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam and those of us who have strove, mm -hmm. they notice a change. I've had brothers and sisters, you know, that don't even know me. I've never met. I'm in regular clothes and I'm in line at a grocery store somewhere. I stopped and got some gas and, you know, people to speak and people have said, you're a Muslim, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Well, why would they ask that question? Or they hear me say something and they say, well, you're Muslim, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Well, what is it? Well, there's that, it's a noticeable change that really manifests from within because we're making an effort to try to live according to the law, statutes, and commandments of God, following the examples found of God and the prophets. And really, in truth, the example that's right before us today in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Well, Let's take a look at some of these prescriptions prescribed to us from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his representative now, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I guess to really look at the prescriptions, we have to look at what happened to us as a people, the, mm -hmm. uh, the side effects from slavery. Mm -hmm. We're stripped of our names, mm -hmm. our language, mm -hmm. our culture, mm -hmm. our God. We lost the knowledge of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We lost the knowledge of our God. Mm -hmm. Completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. So if God had to raise one up from among us, he would put in him a prescription that would cure us of first what? What is the most important one? The most important? The knowledge of God. That's the, the most of important. God, okay. And it's akin to, to the, the knowledge of God. And that's in the study guide, and right? That's <laughs> in the study guide. See, and, and, and I have to say this too, brother. Some are of the mind that it is on, and, and I'll speak to the now. Mm -hmm. Some are of the mind that it is on the minister to go out and fix what's happening in the black community. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. The only duty of the servant or messenger of God is to deliver the message clear. Clear deliverance. It's on the people to act upon the truth that they hear. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest problems that you read throughout scripture when the prophet of God was among the people, most of the people rejected it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until, you know, a few people would come at the preaching of the word. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the people didn't see the efficacy in the word that was being delivered and the truth of about who the man was delivering the word. And now the man is no longer among them. And now the chastisement of God comes, so the rest come at a whooping. Mm -hmm. 
Only a few, the good ones, will come at the word. But the rest come at a whooping. And, and, and when you study scripture, you will see most of the people, most of the people didn't listen to Jesus. Everybody hollering Jesus now mm -hmm. because he's not here, at least in the context of their mind and what most of us understand about. He's not here to make a demand on us. Well, if you live during the time of any of the prophets, will we have followed them? Mm -hmm. Would we have seen them as or for who and what they really were in the eyes of God? Okay. Well, uh, some of us was really say, yeah, I would have been with Moses. Well, would you? Well, when you hear the truth today and you know that's what you're hearing, how do you respond? Mm -hmm. And that tells whether or not you would have responded the same way back then. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, brother, I mean, the polls that they take uh, about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, his message and what he has to say. According to the polls, the vast majority of our people, as I stated, I think last week we talked about mm -hmm. this, 60, 70, 80 percent agree that he, what he's saying is the truth and good for us to hear. You know, well, if that is if that is the case, why is not that manifested? At least among our people in terms of support of what he's saying in terms of acting upon to solve the problems that's happening mm -hmm. in our community. And I find it interesting, brother, most of those who are quote unquote conscious, we love to use this word conscience. My experience is when I talk to them or I've heard them talk, they've had a brush with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by the minister or one of his students that brought them to consciousness. So what that says, brother, is the word has the effect that the, the prescription being given is having the desired effect. Mm -hmm. OK, so the problem is you have to take it according to the way the doctor prescribed it. Mm -hmm. And we're not taking it according. So we're not getting the full healing because we still sick, brother. And, and just like I was alluding to earlier. Most of the people reject, you know, you have some sympathizers and whatnot. And I'm not suggesting anyone here. Well, so you think everybody's supposed to join the nation? No, that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He said this is the launching pad of a worldwide movement in terms of using this as a measuring tool to improve self, to analyze, examine, analyze and correct self. Well, that don't mean everybody coming in the nation, but. Everybody is destined, destined, if we would apply this, all human beings will find in it that which will help them to live according to the laws that should uh, govern proper human conduct. Now, if we look at it, self-improvement, the basis for community development. Mm -hmm. So if everybody went into their own private space mm -hmm. and began to take a look at the man in the mirror mm -hmm. and had a standard to go mm -hmm. by. All right. Because we can use the standard that we've been going by for the last 400 years since we've been here in America. Not black people, no, sir. <laughs> Not black people. Mm -hmm. God has given us a standard to go by. Mm -hmm. Our community will improve overnight. Mm -hmm. But it's something about we have a hard time taking instruction from a man who looks <laughs> like us. <laughs> If he not, if he, excuse me, if he's not authorized mm -hmm. and approved by Pharaoh, mm -hmm. or white people. Mm -hmm. I like how Marcus Garvey said it. Mm -hmm. He called it the aptitude of the Negro to disobey orders coming from himself. Mm -hmm. And Marcus Garvey lamented the fact of being at the head of the largest serious black organization. He had found that Less than 2% of instructions that he gave to be carried out for the absolute good of black people. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what now, of the 100%, he said less than 2% had been carried out in their completeness. Mm -hmm. That's a sickness that we as black people have. We have this aptitude to not want to obey orders coming from someone that look like us. Mm -hmm. And that's a psychological malady that we need to be healed from. Mm -hmm. Because the Honorable, to give you an example, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had been talking about the reality of what they call today UFOs. Now they call them UAPs. Mm -hmm. 
Uh-huh. He was teaching that in the 30s. Uh-huh. He was laughed at. We were laughed at. I remember, brother, some, I remember selling the final call one day. I never forget it. Our sister rolled her window down. I thought she wanted the paper. I walk up to her. She said, I have a question for you. I said, sure. She said, do you all believe in flying saucers? I said, ma'am, yes, that's part of what we believe. You can find it. And, and as soon as I said you can find it, she was rolling her window up. Zzz, and she was looking at me like, <laughs> as if to say, good God, they're crazy for real. <sighs> but now, mm-hmm. there's an interview that 60 Minutes have done with America's, some of her fighter pilots that are bearing witness mm-hmm. to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad They just had hearings <laughs> in Congress. They just had hearings for, for on a whole it. week. <laughs> for a whole week. <laughs> On, they said, now it's real. They had people studying it, you know. So now, what a man from among you had been telling us. Since 1930. We couldn't accept it. But now here comes the very people. And their uh, uh, media outlets Mm -hmm. that have distorted our stories all the time. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. now that they say it, now people are going, oh, for real? Well, a man among you has been telling you that the whole time. Now, here's the question for me. You mean to tell me now that mainstream media has put it on, you know, giving it play and saying, well, yeah, it's real. It's true. You mean to tell me now that Honorable Elijah Muhammad was right about that, but he's wrong about everything else? Mm-hmm. I think the <laughs> problem is with us, and that's a part of our illness, the self-hate. Been stripped of our names, our language, our culture, and our God, and the knowledge of self. Fixed in a way to reject the man of God. Yeah. The problem black people have is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad saying, God taught me this. Mm-hmm. Him never taking credit of it. Mm-mm. He never God taught, taught me this. He says, so Allah has taught me. So That's how he would say it sometimes. We have a hard time seeing God working through someone who looks like us. Mm-hmm. Everybody else in co- every human being, I was looking at a, a, a comment on Facebook one day. It was really, it was a picture and it mm-hmm. just had a caption by it. And it had a picture of people of India, the deity they worship looked like them. Mm-hmm. And they had another, I think Chinese, their image of God looked like them. Then they had white people, their image of God looked like them. Mm-hmm. And then they had a black person. That black person's image of God looked like white people's image of God. And then I heard a black person say, and please, audience, don't get offended. Black people hate everything about slavery except Christianity. Mm -hmm. But I would amend that. Black people hate everything about slavery except for Eurocentric right supremacy taught to us under the guise of Christianity. Because they didn't teach us the -hmm. teachings of Christ. They did not. You know, and history is full of data and evidence that they had no intention of teaching us that would liberate us or empower us in a way that they could not maintain a level of control over us. Mm -hmm. Even to this very day, that's true. Brothers and sisters, that's why it's so important for you to begin to study the self-improvement basis for community development study guides. Uh, You can purchase your study guide on study.noi.org or you can come to the study group. Yeah, you can come if you're in Holly Springs in Marshall County. You can come to 165 North Memphis Street. Mm -hmm. Right now we are uh, making it available to whomever wants to come. We are having it via Zoom. So uh, uh, we'll make that information available. If you want to know more about that, mm-hmm. call 662-299. Good God of mercy. The number was in my head. I'm going to my phone. Stand by. We'll give you the That's number right. to call. And also, if you're in Memphis location, you're welcome to go by 873, 873 Vance, Vance Avenue, Avenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fridays at 730. Mm-hmm. And also, brother, let's... Before we close out, we want to talk about an event that is coming up on October 26, 24, the Real Talk Tour. Yes, and I got that number. Mm-hmm. If you want to know how to study with us Friday nights at 7.30 via Zoom, if you want to come on, 
give us a call at 662-252-8999. That should have been easy. And also, if they want to come out on Sundays. If you want to come out on Sundays, um, um, we are.